There's a certain desired look and feel when it comes to commercial work. This is due to the way that they're directed, shot, edited, and everything in between. But how do you achieve something like that? And what steps are needed to get that commercial look? In this video, I'm gonna be going over specifically how we shot a commercial for Shopify. I'm gonna break down some scenes, look at some lighting diagrams, and everything in between. What is the commercial look? That is a question that could be answered in many different ways, but these projects specifically that we're looking at, we're looking at something that you would see on TV or an ad or something like that, that is bright and airy. It's almost being transported to a different world where everything is lit perfectly and there's a certain feeling to it as well. The scenes that we're gonna be focusing on specifically in the Shopify is kind of the three hero shots we see of each of the characters that are introduced into this. By the way, if you're interested in how we executed this project, there's a link right here. Just looking at this image from a glance, I classify this as being a commercial look and feeling super lit. When I say that this feels lit, that we are sitting in this commercial space where there's pockets of light everywhere, there's interest everywhere, and the center of the tension, which is our talent here, just pops. In this scene specifically, the main talent was picking up the ice cream, which is right over here, and then she walks around this table. Now, this was an interesting challenge to me because generally when I'm shooting commercials, my talent isn't necessarily moving and I'm basically in one scene. So it was lighting for a walking portion of this, which we didn't really use in the edit, but I had to have it just in case because the client wanted it. I'm gonna start off with my key light here and not necessarily the frames, but I have a sky panel S60 right here and that is set to daylight. So I have that at 5,600 Kelvin. And this is shooting through a fast frame, six by four, I believe. And this has one layer of diffusion as well as a grid on it as well. So what that grid does is just kills the spill. And then I have it angled off and you can see that it's lighting the table here. And then this is like the edge. So this is getting my main key source on my talent and then just giving me the nice highlight on the left side of her face. And then because my talent is walking around this way, like I said, I wanted to have another light here to pop out her face even more because I knew that the body of this person would block her. So I have an Amaran F22, and then this is double diffused with the grid on it as well. And that's hanging out over with a boom. So this is acting as my hair light and then also a top light when she walks around here. So this is shooting down this way. Now those are my main two key sources and then I had a bunch of black material which is behind me, which in this case behind camera. So I'll just put that here. But I believe it was just two floppies behind me and that was just to add a little bit of contrast. I knew that she was gonna be walking around and that I wouldn't have a lot of room and that's the problem when you're shooting like these wide scenes is how do you add contrast back to the face. And the way you achieve that is adding more levels of to the talent itself from your key side and playing with the natural light that is already in the room. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna go into is actually how you make things look unworldly or unrealistic in this commercial space. So I actually have a Titan II set up here, and this is acting as a practical light source, as well as just giving some interest on this back wall. And this is when I start to play with different color temperatures. I lit the main talent with 5600 Kelvin, and then this hair light here is 5600 Kelvin as well and gonna be swapping until when she walks over. And then I also have little MCs scattered along the place. I love using these MCs and Titan tubes and any little light sources just to add a little pockets of light. And this is just adding little visual interest. So this is just the bare MC at maybe like 2% and that's sitting at 5600 Kelvin. And I'm just looking at these pockets of lights in terms of what makes sense in terms of color temperature. Not necessarily anything will work here, but it's just playing with them on set and seeing like, okay, well, does this work? Do I like this as well? And then you can only see the edge of the other light here, but I have another MC shooting down here. And this is sent to a little warmer. So I'd say this is around 2700. I usually like to play between these two realms because this is the colors I like as well. And the last light that we used was a Aperture 600D, and that is with a Fresnel blasting up into the ceiling. And this is just giving us the levels into the room. So you can see that some of the levels splashing back on here. And then by the corner here, you can see some levels also here. I know this is kind of intimidating to the amount of lights that we had because we had access to a full grip shop. But a lot of these lights I personally own as well as tenfold owns in terms of the MCs and the Titan tubes. And when it comes to using lights in commercial work, I usually love to put up a tube or a practical that motivates things. In this case, that practical of the Titan tube acts as a practical and also a hair light because you can see that on 
top of her head here and also her hair. And then if we're looking at her face herself, and this isn't too contrasty, you always have to feel what the mood is of the commercial that you're shooting. And this commercial is supposed to be lit, it's supposed to be bright, it's supposed to be airy. So my contrast levels between the lightest part of my town's face and the darkest part, I want this to feel real, but I also want to feel this enhanced in its own world. And this is the next hero shot that we're gonna be looking at. So this was a difficult one. This was honestly the one of the most difficult shots to light in the piece because the room that we were using was just so small. In the previous shot of this sequence, there's actually a window here. You always want to motivate your light and making a scene seem real. And I knew that this window was going to be on the right, so that is going to be my key side. And then on the left, I'm going to develop my shadows. It is opposite to my light source, and that's where I'm going to keep camera. You always want to be shooting on the shadow side. So there's a lot to break down here. So the first thing that I'm going to go into is the little pockets of light that we added here. So this is an MC, again, set to a little, a little orange color. This is where we actually started playing with some color temperatures and stuff. And then there's another MC behind this piece of clothing and that's shooting up into here. And we have this little lamp here and then we turn this lamp on then we put a bunch of diff material on it because we couldn't necessarily dim it. But I wanted to actually have this and this is giving us the light that you see here. But you also see this streak of light. And this is again, I always say this in terms of what my favorite light sources are, but this light is, I love this light. So this is a Nanlite 60B, so a very small light source, and it has a spotlight attachment. And what that spotlight is doing, I asked my gaffer to narrow it and also focus it, so it gives us this hard cut of light, and it just gives us a nice visual interest in terms of what's going on. And then you can see that like this is emulating sunlight going through a window. I didn't want to put any blinds or anything or like specific gobos in front of it. I just wanted to hard cut a light that goes over and also splashes some light everywhere else. And then I also have another light fixture. I believe this was a Ford's of 500, but this was set at like 5%. And then this light is shooting down over here and then giving me another pool of light that looks like it's coming from that window. You don't necessarily just wanna have one streak of beaming light coming through a window because that would look kind of fake. You want to add different rays of light and also different forms. The further you put these lights away from where you want it to be hitting, it looks more natural and less artificial in terms of what actual sunlight looks like. And talking about that sunlight, additionally, we have a nice spool of light going on his arms, so it looks more realistic and on his hands. And this is a combination of the 60B as well as the Forza 500, just giving us that natural daylight. I'm not necessarily going to go and talk about him, but you can see one tube here. We had to crop this in for the actual final deliverables of the project so we don't see the tube, but you see also another tube here. In this space, there's a bunch of overhead rigging options in terms of pipes and stuff that we could stick magnets to. So what I did is have my gaffer rig up a bunch of Titan tubes in the formation of what I wanted to light. So if we look at this room, my talent is here at this desk. And then what I did, I'll just draw this in another color, is I had my gaffer put up a Titan tube here behind him which you can see in the reflection of the clock. Another one here behind him as well. And then another one here and another one here. My shooting direction is here and I'm establishing my shadow side on this side. So I'm going to backlight him from these tubes on the top. And then I'm gonna, and I'm gonna boost that level in terms of my key light with those other two Titan tubes if I have that. I don't know, I don't remember exactly which ones were on and off and what percentages they were at, but I had my gaffer put them on individual lights so I could say, hey, could you boost the one right up behind him to the right of him or even further right and point them in different directions in terms of adding more levels and ambient to the room itself. And that was the main thing that these Titan tubes do is just lift the entire level of the room so it looks bright and like this other world in terms of this commercial, the world that we're trying to live in for this project. The next thing that we're gonna be looking at is our actual talent. In this case, I had an F22 just boomed over and this was double diffused with my grid set to a daylight color to match the daylight of the window. Again, this is a motivated light source and then just this gives me 
my natural look here and we get nice Rembrandt lighting. This is a little contrasty compared to the last one, but it still feels bright and airy. And this is more contrast just due to skin color. When you're working with darker skin, there tends to be a lot more contrast. And then to add a little bit more contrast in the image, as you can see, if we look at a gradient even across this wall, we go from dark to light. And to add that negative fill, I just had two floppies on this side sitting over, obviously, camera left here. Looking at this project, a lot of people get caught up in terms of what was your key light source? What big lights did you use for this room necessarily? And it wasn't not a lot of big lights. I like to use small lights and be intentional in terms of lighting a room. The first thing that I looked at was lighting the background, adding visual interest to the walls, anything that we could do in that terms, and then looking at the foreground in terms of what is our talent working on. How can we add pools of light anywhere that we can? I'm not just shooting one light in one direction and then hoping for the best. I'm being intentional with all my light sources and everything like that. And then when it comes to my talent, I'm just using one light source and using a simple light panel to kick out my talent. because. Because the room is already set up and that is the most difficult part and then I just bring in another light to brighten up my talent. Now we're going into the next scene and I would consider this is my favorite shot of the entire piece in just terms of composition, how soft the lighting is and how commercial this looks. And the first thing that we're going to start off is the practical light sources. Obviously you can see this ugly Titan tube and Cardellini clamp right there, but we cropped in and post just to get the edge of the light and then blurred this Cardellini but this is just adding some visual interest to the shelf here and some light pools in that part of the image because it's pretty dark over there. And then we have a little MC and another one and then one right behind him. Now we're gonna love to add a lot of more pools of light to this, but we only had three of the MCs. The other one, it comes in a pack of four, but the other one just died. But I would love to put one here, down here or any other place back even down here where it's not exactly popping out like the other parts of the room. And in this light fixture here, we have a B7C, and this is set to an orange color, similar to the orange of this. And this is adding that light here, and also to the desk, and then also to his soap cutting device here. And then now we can move to the key light situation. This was a little different. I used that big six by four scrim. And then behind that, I have an Intelli Mega Light Cloth. And then this is why this looks so soft and diffused. On the scrim, I have a stop of diffusion and then also the grid to kill all the spill. And then on the IntelliTech Mega Light Cloth, which is already spread out already, there's another stop of diffusion. So this is double diffused and it's just spread and then it just gives us that super soft look that we have here and a nice contrast ratio when we look across the face. And this is just that buttery commercial look that we're always looking for in terms of skin tones, lighting people's face. We have that nice Rembrandt, Rembrandt lighting. And going back to the first one that we're looking at, this is more contrasty than that image, but this is just due to the fact that the space we're working with and then also adding any more lights. And then talking about the last light that we use, we use another Aperture 600D with a Fresnel and that is just blasted up into the room to give us some more levels to the room. So that is acting as our ambient and then all these lights are set to 5600 Kelvin and then my practicals are set to like 2700 Kelvin. You can ask me where I learned this technique from, but I can't really tell you what. This is just something that feels good on set and something I do commonly. Even the setup right now, I'm keying myself with daylight and then using practical light sources with that blue. And then in there, I have a MC set to 2700 Kelvin. This is just something I like and something I like to push when it comes to my work specifically. This is the last one that we're going to be looking at. And the reason why I wanted to do this shot specifically is because bringing that commercial look to outdoors be something very difficult in terms of making your talent pop in these outdoor situations because this was an overcast day and this was looking super flat. So we had to add that contrast back into his face. So the way we did that is we had two floppies set up on the side here and then we had a generator with an aperture 600d with a fresnel and this is daylight and this is hitting the side of his face and this is bare bulb there's no diffusion or anything in front of it we wanted to make it feel like a bright sunny day and then you could see that with the spread and it's flooding all across his hand and across his arm as well and his face and then when he looks forward, you can see that we have some Rembrandt lighting. And then just the gradient look across his face is very soft and very nice. Obviously, this is due to the colors that we're working with. 
and he really made this project come to life in terms of hitting that commercial look and that is just sending proper references and everything like that but i just wanted to look at this example to showcase how you achieve some of these looks outside because specifically when you're shooting this scene we didn't have a lot of time but i said hey can i have five minutes and with my gaffer and then we set these things up and then everybody was super happy with the shot in terms of how it looked and it's just putting effort into every single shot. And looking into this even deeper, we could have added a splash of light into his shop here. But the main visual interest in what we we're looking at is the focus of the phone because this was about their mobile app. I didn't want to take away from anything the commercial was specifically focusing on by adding more visual interest into the background. You kind of have to judge yourself in terms of what am I shooting? Am I trying to make the most beautiful image possible? Or am I being hired for my technical skills in terms of showcasing the person, their business and the app itself? So this is something that you have to constantly juggle and really realign yourself in terms of it's always not about creative Activity, but more about execution and being technical. I hope this breakdown helped and give you some insight in terms of how we shoot some of these commercials. Commercial looks are tricky to achieve, but with the right crew and mindset, you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. If you found this video helpful or insightful in any way and want to see more videos like this where we break down our commercial projects, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.